If you want to have the availability to boot multiple ISOs off a single USB drive, then Ventoy is your answer. In this video, I will be showing how to make a Ventoy USB from both Windows and Linux, as well as showing the USB booting two Windows ISOs and two Linux ISOs. If your computer is running Windows, this is how you will install Ventoy onto the USB within Windows. I plug in the USB, which is blank. Note that Ventoy will format the USB, so be sure to back it up beforehand. We will Google for Ventoy, link will also be in the description, then go to their download section and download the zip file for Windows. Once it is done, we will then extract the zip file and run the exe file. Once Ventoy is open, we will select the device, aka the USB that we want to install Ventoy to. We can see it is not installed to the device, so we're going to click install, and it's going to say it's going to format and all data will be lost, so be sure to back up the USB. It'll even ask you twice to make sure. Then it'll start installing Ventoy to the USB drive. Once the USB is done, it'll say Ventoy successfully installed to the device, and from that point, we should be able to copy an ISO straight to the USB without any problems. However, I recommend USB 3, as it's faster. Also, you should be able to boot most Linux and Windows ISOs on both UEFI and Legacy. In this section, I will be updating an existing Ventoy USB that I had, which was my main current Ventoy USB. I go back to the Ventoy website again, which I highly recommend bookmarking so that you could get the newer versions and check it periodically and I extract it once again and, and run it, and once we run it, we will see that the Ventoy version is out of date as it's on 1.0.17. I click update and I click yes, and then it says it's successfully updated, and from that point, all our ISOs are completely untouched as it does not modify them at all. I did have the update fail once, but I re-downloaded the zip and it was fine after that. I also recommend enabling secure boot support as most computers nowadays use secure boot. I left the partition style as MBR and it was perfectly fine, and pretty much that's Ventoy. In this section, I'm going to show you how to install Ventoy if you're on Linux. So once again, we're going to go back to the Ventoy website again, but this time we're going to tell it to download the Linux version instead of the Windows one, as you can see right there. And then it'll take us back to the website again to where we can download the Linux. We will save the file, and after it's saved, we'll obviously open the location of the file, and then we're going to extract it. You can see that it does have some scripts in there. Now we will go to the Linux terminal as we will need to use terminal commands in order to install it to the USB. Once we are in the terminal, we need to go to the location where we extracted Ventoy. After that, we need to give it permissions in order to execute by doing chmod plus x and then the script name dot sh. After that, we will run the script with the dash dash help command so that we can see the options that are available. You will see that a lowercase i will install Ventoy, a capital I will force Ventoy whether it's installed or not, dash u will update Ventoy. First, we're going to do an LSVLK so we can find out what our USB is so that we don't accidentally install it to the wrong drive. Then we're going to run the script as sudo, otherwise you can't write it. And we are going to do the dash lowercase i, as well as dash s for secure boot support. And then slash dev slash sdc in our case, but will be different for yours. Then we will enter our password to use sudo. It'll ask, do we want to write it? It tells us the disk so that we can make sure it's correct. It'll say everything will be lost, so again, make sure the USB is backed up. It'll also ask twice, and then it'll start creating the USB as normal, but this time in terminal, instead of being in an actual application like Windows. To update Ventoy on Linux, just replace the I with the U with the command you did. It'll say it finished installing, and then we can go to our file manager and see our Ventoy USB, which shows. It'll also show within Windows as I booted back in Windows and it also showed up the same. 
Now I'm going to show booting the Ventoy USB on a laptop, and first I'm going to show a Windows ISO. So I'm going to reboot it and push F12 for the boot menu on this Dell, and we're first going to boot Legacy. Note that Ventoy will boot both UEFI and Legacy. Now I'm going to select the ISO, which is Windows 10 2004. Note you cannot have spaces in the name or it will not work. Now it's going to boot the ISO, which of course I'm not going to actually install Windows, but I'm just showing that it does indeed work. To boot to the Ventoy USB, be sure you have the right boot menu key for your computer. So for HPs, it's usually F9, Dells are F12, Gigabyte motherboards are F12, Toshiba is F12, MSI is F11, and Samsung is Escape depending on the model that may or may not be the right F key. For more information, look up the model of your computer to find the correct key. Now this time we're going to boot the Ventoy USB, but this time in UEFI. In this case, I'm going to select Windows 8.1 from the list. Now it will say press any key to boot from CD or USB. It does that sometimes, so I'll push a key and it'll boot the ISO. Now obviously I'm not going to install it and I can't go further in the setup as it does ask for a product key. I could have gotten a generic key, but I decided not to and to just close the setup. Also, if you're unsure about the UEFI and legacy thing, you could just go in your BIOS and see what it is set on. Now we're going to boot back up to the Ventoy USB and we're going to select the Linux ISO. It will work on both UEFI and legacy, however in this case I just do UEFI as most computers are UEFI. So I'm going to this time boot Ubuntu, as that seems to be a common distro, but it will boot pretty much any Linux distro you throw at it. I've even booted Arch before and it worked. So I just click try Ubuntu as I'm not going to actually install it. And there is Ubuntu. I did speed up some parts of the video as well. And I just opened Firefox for example just to show that it does indeed work. And then afterwards I will just restart it so we can boot the other ISO. We're going to go back to the boot menu with F12 again. And we are going to boot UEFI again, but Legacy will work, keep that in mind. And this time we are going to boot Linux Mint. It did have some weird graphical glitch for some reason, but it did end up fixing that because all I had to do was I had to close the display and then I had to reopen it again. Once again, I will open Firefox just to show that it is indeed functional. And you can install Linux and it will work. I have installed Linux many times off of Eventual USB and it was working perfectly fine. And now we're going to shut this down as we are done with it. So that is Ventoy. So Ventoy I would highly recommend as it is faster than Rufus. However, there were times I had to use Rufus because Ventoy was being weird. I do have a computer where as soon as I select an ISO on Ventoy, it just restarts, which is really strange. But Ventoy is good because you can fit multiple ISOs on a USB. However, it's recommended to have a big USB drive as mine is 64 gigs so I can fit many ISOs. But anyways, thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.